is okay. <laughs> you're okay. Yeah, you're okay. Come on. Yeah. So, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, I lost my train you're okay. of thought. <laughs> Yeah, we were just talking about the gluten and how it can actually have the, um, the, the imbalance when it comes to the output. So when we talk about uh, the allergic, you were saying that it flattens, whereas when we talk about the um, intolerance, you know, it has a different response, really. Yes, it has a chest. different response. Uh, yes, if somebody is uh, ha actually has celiac disease, you they could get a really bad uh, reaction to having uh, toaster bread in a toaster where gluten containing bread was in before you know so even yeah. supplements or if in the pot was cooked pasta containing gluten and afterwards you cook in free pasta so we're talking about minute amounts and whereas with okay. the, somebody with the sensitivity it's not quite as bad at the beginning, I would definitely recommend that they would take out all the gluten too, because obviously it's a problem and the test will tell us if it's a problem so that the, the gut gets a chance to recover and Over. heal itself. Yeah. You know, and you, your body will basically tell you afterwards how much you tolerate or not. Yes, um, it will. And the same with dairy. Is that not true? Yes, with dairy, it's similar. Now, um, as we go older, our ability to digest dairy starts reducing. That's Absolutely. normal. Yeah. In the whole animal kingdom, yeah. we're part of that. <laughs> um, yeah, so. It's amazing, isn't it, how quickly that can change going into kind of menopause, I think, really, even um, when the metabolism starts slowing down as we get older. Yes, um, the, the, what we find, the elimination processes are getting a little bit slower. So um, that can cause uh, problems, you know, so um, yeah. definitely. And, and is there a test to test that something like the, the dairy? Does that come into one of the tests there as well under any of them? Um, <clears throat> we do have a lactose intolerance test but that is a genetic test. So it yeah. tests if you um, are actually lactose intolerant, if you're genetically, you're lacking a gene which helps you to break down lactose. So that is for primary lactose intolerance. Um, what often as a person gets older, we're dealing with is secondary lactose intolerance it means that you have not looked very well after your gut. Um, there's inflammation going on. You might have a leaky gut and that is causing your problems with the dairy. So there is not a specific test for the secondary lactose intolerance, but it's covered by whatever tests you have in the program. Okay, okay. which is um, great actually, yeah. Yeah, so the um, primary is more for younger people children you know because or somebody who wants to know you know they always had problems with it with this okay. that it's a genetic problem and you know we just can't produce the uh, enzymes to break down milk properly and that yeah causes the problem. and it causes the problem which is which is i think in ireland a huge factor in today's world um because of the of the, of the protein and also because that molecule has changed due to you know different pesticides going in different chemicals being used different hormones being used in cattle um, mm -hmm. hence when the milk then comes through it's on a completely different process than it was you know 50 years ago you know what I mean when you had the old farmer and it it, it, it just the cow in the in in, in being grass-fed in, in in his land going in to be milked, then just going straight to, to the um, uh, the creamery, you know, and then that was a completely different process to what it is now. There's a lot more different chemicals going in. So it does have a different um, process. So hence, or, or, or molecules are changing as well, or bacteria changes because of that, doesn't it? Uh, yes, I think over time, our gut flora has changed, you know, um, as ha have our diets, uh, but it's a fairly slow process. <laughs> yes, yeah. 
Absolutely. First, so when you're looking at different tests in it, would you combine them like you did the first one, which was the candida? If you did the complete status, you would actually get um, one A as well. You know, yep. it would test for that. Is there other tests there that kind of combine on the on the list? Um, well, uh, the four leaky gut markers we can combine into an IBS panel. So if somebody has been suffering with gut problems for a long time and there's definitely lots of inflammation going on, then that's fantastic to help to get to the bottom, bottom of, it. of it. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. And then there's a good discount for it. Basically, if you order, um, three of those markers individually it's more expensive than ordering all four in one go oh, yeah. the lab has given us a great discount on that um <clears throat> the other tests we all have kept separately no you're so, fine so so that you know people can choose and we can tailor the kit more for the individual needs yeah um, and do but you have I, a kit a kit there to show us? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, no, you're all right. <laughs> so the okay. test kit is very simple. It's a little cardboard box. And this here, can you see this? This is yeah. the mouse swab. We talked about that uh, when you do the fungal test, uh, you'll check in the mouse. If it originates from, from there, if it's there before it tra traveled into the gut. Now, this is the transport tube of our stew sample tube. Let's see if we can go here. Okay, yeah. Um, if we, I turn it like this, you can see there is a little spoon. Yeah, it is, yeah. Inside it, this helps you for doing the sampling. Yes. And this is actually the little sample tube. Mm, hang on. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not not a lot, you know, you have to put in three quarters of it and you close it. And then for the transport, it's put in here with the paper to absorb any little leakages because they are flown to Germany. Um, which with each kit, you come comes here a sheet where you take all the tests. Which ones you want? And the ones you want for the lab in yeah, Germany. Yeah, you see it you reversed just... now. Yeah. I'm afraid. <laughs> no, it's, it, it, it's all like on the list. Um, and this piece of paper, um, those ones are the instructions. instructions. And basically, there are step by step guides um, of how to take the samples. Yeah. And how to do the packaging. Now, <laughs> after at the end, you'll. You have these things. You turn it up a, the other way. Great. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's a DHL air bill. So um, at each test kit, uh, you become one courier pickup. So once you've taken the samples during DHL and they pick up for any, from anywhere in Ireland, and they come and pick up your little cardboard box again um, and courier it to our lab in Germany. Now, most places in Ireland, it's there the next day before 12 o'clock. Um, some of the more rural parts, uh, DHL calls plus one areas where okay. it can take an extra day to transport it to Germany. For most, of, for all of our tests, the, the samples are valid for five days. So that gives us plenty of time, time okay. sampling and getting it over to the lab in Germany with the transport we have. Now, uh, I can see, try to avoid sending it off on Fridays because it doesn't come the weekend, on Monday. Okay. Yeah. That's the only thing to watch yeah. out for. And not not with the five days transport, it doesn't really matter that much either. Okay. If, if somebody is not that regular, they just sample whenever they can and forget about all the times and just send it off because we have set up the transport that will be there in time. Time, okay. Within okay. that time limit, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, which is great service because, you know, it's at your door, you can do it at home. You don't have to leave your house. You just do the sample, you put it back into the box and then you put it into the, the airway, you know, sort 
that piece yes. isn't it yeah you're standing the, the courier envelope still <laughs> that goes in there that and then the dhl is separate is it Jeanette? um uh, the error bill goes into this window into, pocket into the window pocket yeah so that goes in there um and the stuff goes into the bag yeah like which is like so and then everything else goes the box goes back into the bag yes mm -hmm. And it gives you a neat little package in a plastic bag. So, uh, which is great to share now with people because visibly it's great to see how that. Um, sorry, so brilliant. Here, yeah, there is the little box, box inside it now. Yeah, and then the and airwear bill is at the back, and you leave it open until the until the courier comes and picks it up they're yeah. they're supposed to examine the boxes okay. now um <clears throat> i've sent a fair few of those but um i i offered it offer it to them all the time but somehow the deck drivers don't want to look into the box <laughs> well it's european regulations and the packaging all european regulations so you know of course it's important that they're safely packaged that nothing leaks and more gets infected <laughs> along the way absolutely to handle something you know unsanitary you know? yeah so, yeah so it, it, it's at its best you can do it from home send off and then the results come back to yourself and then you send them to me Yes. Yeah. They go back to Michelle um, via email. So the feedback from the lab is nice and fast. And um, what's that about a week? Is it Jeanette or two weeks? Two weeks usually. Well, seven so, to ten, ten days, days is the yeah. average. Um, yeah. Some of the markers take a little longer, but two weeks in general. In general, usually yeah. Usually the max turnaround time. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. You know, um, you could go to your doctor and it could take. A little bit longer that's you leaving your house and they mightn't even be able to do some of those tests uh, that you can do do you know what i mean so um a, a lot of what people find is that is they put the, the tube down you know with regards to the gut and they still might not might not find certain things do you know what i mean um whereas i find with these tests you're identifying and pinning it to if it's a gut wall or it's the candida or it's, you know, IBS or, you know what I mean? And you can identify then where your therapy goes or where the treatment plan goes with regards to the next steps, which I think gives you a more of a plan, more of a, an identity with regards to recovery as well. I think that has a huge impact. Mm. Yes, and sometimes we have also have come back, results come back, um, clear and which is also quite a valuable information because you know that that part of the body you tested for is working fine yes. and doesn't need the extra support so you know that's good you know because yeah, you don't absolutely. have to put extra support for that into would, you, would you ever go back and retest to this um do you well, ever recommend yeah. like so, how long so, would you leave it um it depends so sometimes if somebody has been candida for a long time um i would rec would recommend to retest if they're not fully feeling fully right after it after they're finished with the therapy now usually after the last <clears throat> antifungal you have to wait at least two weeks before you can retest to get valid results. Um, for example, H. pylori, that's the stomach uh, bacteria we Area. spoke about, because it causes alter ulcers, which ultimately could damage the yeah. stomach uh, um, cancer. I usually recommend that you test after that because it's also a, a, a more tricky one to customer to treat. Um, and to be sure that it's completely gone and not just that, uh, you know, it's a yeah. low grade, con low continues grade. as a low grade infection. Um, well, we have also in the gut bacteria, Clostridium. If you have a Clostridium infection, high particular perfusions, I would retest 
to make sure that when we have addressed the gut uh, flora that those more pathogenic species are well low and our yeah. therapy was completely it successful is. you know um, um leaky gut could be also something that it. you want to retest okay um, okay you give it uh, you know between two to four weeks after you finish the therapy to um to see you know if the therapy success is continuous you know if all the symptoms you had before are gone you know sometimes you might have to retest for also for something completely different because you had maybe with your therapy addressed the candida problem both symptoms have gone but some new symptoms have <laughs> appeared yeah because we find um <clears throat> sometimes you know that we couldn't see those symptoms because the, the other problem was problem so was big masking that, it. that it was masking it. Mm. So, and when the therapy was successful, we see that there is still one area which needs help, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so you might have to think if you need to test for something else, you know? And, and is there any way that we could, that you could test, you know, predominantly for, you know, if there was, um, um, you know, uh, cancer cells, you know, with regards to um, catching something early? Yeah, well, we have um, <clears throat> two markers which are kind of related to cancer. One is the tumor marker, which tests for a tumor along the gastrointestinal Intestine. tract. Brilliant. That diagnoses tumors which aren't bleeding. And then we have the hem hem uh, <clears throat> hemoglobin um, test in it too complex and that tests for tumors which are bleeding okay. um so it tests for slightly different tumors along the gastrointestinal tract so i usually recommend to do both you to know both. okay it'll, it'll pick up small bleeds in the gut which you wouldn't see in the stool Just, with your eye you know okay. if you see blood in your stool it tends to be um at the very end, end. of your colon because yeah. If it travels any further, it act, the blood actually changes from it's red color. to black. Yeah, because it yeah, starts yeah. to get oxygenated, <clears throat> and small amounts you wouldn't be able to see with your yeah. eye. You know, yeah. so that's yeah. why you need the test to make so sure a, that there isn't any. That's great, actually. And what about things like Alzheimer's or dementia for you know for older uh, people? Would you have markers to identify that it could be something that was stemming or um or no there's no specific to... test i'm afraid for that sorry for that no that's no. okay it's just something no. that i um uh, i think um what it can be related to is is having very poor uh, gut colonization and you can test for the ibs markers or would and maybe leaky gut okay Okay, and that's great. Again, going back to the basics again, the leaky gut, you know, and identifying what's going on there. Is it is it something that can be rectified, or uh, is there something that's masking something else? So always knowing that, I think Jeanette is a great way. Now we've only five minutes left. Really, we've been on a whole hour. Can you imagine? Um, <laughs> and it's been gone so quickly um, that all the information is so relevant. I think to everybody these days with regards to how they're digesting their food how they're absorbing it and how they're eliminating it it is such a huge factor of who we are you know as humans and how we really incorporate um our life at the moment because we're all on an emotional roller coaster with covid we're all on that you know that 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 factor of how we you know not just absorb our food but you know our self care as well has a huge factor to come into play i think and taking responsibility and accountability for our own health um in order to be well for ourselves in order to identify you know um what's going on for me you know and i think that has a huge factor you know, is it something I need to get tested? You know, is it something that I could deal with? Or, you know, is the symptoms going on and on? Are they not getting better? You know what I mean? So it's it's really coming to understand that, isn't it, Jeanette? You know, if your symptoms aren't getting better, really that test then could probably be a really good indicator of what's going on. Yeah, that definitely could help you to get to the bottom of what is the underlying problem and point you in the right direction you know kind of where to work um 
to improve on, your health. Yeah, yeah. So whether it be the gut, which is always where we start because it's the gut and then that really, really connects with the rest of the body completely. You know, it has everything to do with the liver, the brain, you know, the kidneys, the adrenals or hormones. Everything has a huge impact with how we actually work with our food and how it interacts with, as you said, the outer world and the inner world, which is the gut wall. And how those junctions yes. really are working. Are they tight or are they loose? Is the food getting in and is it causing inflammation? So I think that has a huge impact. Um, so I hope everybody enjoyed. Um, and, you know, um, and Jeanette, how did, did you find that helpful? Really kind of sharing what you do with regards to, um, you know, the test and you know it's been great having you on and uh, we're definitely going to get you on and we're going to get you on maybe for one topic out of all of these and then we can just <laughs> you know spend a little bit of time on that I think that would be good people would like that um, um, because it's good to kind of break up a little part of you know a lot of things and just really starting on one thing i.e if it's the stool itself or the IBS itself or if it's the gut you know and candida maybe we just take a topic the next time you know you've given us a whole taster of what <laughs> of what can be done you know which is great but then breaking that down then to uh, different people can be great at different symptoms you know so um so if anyone's any questions you know please come back to us um and it's hard to tell on on, on Facebook I always find sometimes because um they, they don't kind of tend to come up, but it's only afterwards. It's live now on Facebook at the moment. So the minute I press live, you'll start talking and I'll start talking. Um, but the questions haven't kind of come in yet. But definitely um, there will be questions probably afterwards and people will, you know, will want to know or, you know, understand if it's them that needs to get tested or if it's their, what are my symptoms? Do I need to get tested and so forth? So we might have a separate if there's loads of questions, we might have a separate Zoom session. Um, with people on it and then we could maybe open it up and, and see or if someone has specific maybe you give me a call um, and then we can go through it and if there's something that, that we need to maybe understand a little bit more we can get back to Jeanette and ask her her opinion with regards to which test would be more appropriate for that symptom um, which I think is always a good idea anyway just to have another eye on on the problem or the issue whatever that might be so thank you Jeanette for coming this morning it's been absolutely brilliant um and I've loved for having me <laughs> loved hearing your story I also uh, studied with CNM um so you know so it's great to meet fellow um I suppose students colleagues you know um to understand that we're all trying to support people um in the world today and really to give them um a guide a support, a tool in order for them to feel better and that they can get that uh, feel good factor, you know, that they can feel good and well in their day and as they get older as well into healthier life uh, as they as they go on into their life, you know, so we want that for everybody, don't we, Jeanette? We want everybody to feel well. And to Absolutely. Feel yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely, you know, no. And, you know, um, as we get older, you start and ha well, ha having raised your family, you're getting time more to do things for yourself. You want to be well and you want to be fit enough to enjoy that time, you know, as well as as any other stages, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah usually in the middle part, you're with that much busier <laughs> it, it, it is much busier you know when we're having kids you know and um um we even have somebody in the group at the moment that she's expecting for the end of the month you know what i mean which is oh, great news good. yeah yeah we're wishing Lovely. her all the best you know so definitely again you know so uh, if there's anything going on there maybe tests could be done afterwards or you know for for various different um for various different reasons but again it's good to know that you're there Jeanette it's good to know that BTS you know have our back and that you can do the tests for us um, send them off to Germany um, they've got fantastic labs over there they get them sent back with the results um, and very reasonable I find as well the tests are very reasonable you know so yeah. um, but if you combine them then you might get a lot more results with regards to what's actually going on inside so um, so again thank you Jeanette and um yeah You're very we're, welcome we're um, we're delighted to have you on today and thank you and listen we might hopefully have you on again so um without further ado i'm going to say um goodbye and um uh we'll see you again no doubt Bye, everybody
Thank you. It was you. lovely chatting to you, Michelle, and goodbye to everybody else. Um, sure, send me an email with the questions if you want um, okay. any answers. And brilliant. You can post them then. Yeah, brilliant. We can post them into the group. All right. All Thanks, right. Jeanette. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.